And talking about what I want to talk about start now is talking about for the phrase under the law. Paul says we are not under the law, right? You know, Romans six fourteen. He says, "For sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace." Now, that typically winds up bringing about something that he also deals with called licentiousness, where you figure, okay, I'm under grace, I'm not under the law, I can do whatever I want. I have license to do what I want, and God will forgive me. Well, that's an abomination from the pits of hell, all right? And that's why it's important that we look at this and why the phrase under the law is important. Words are important, okay? If all scripture is God-breathed, that means every word in here has power, has purpose. And this is one of the great dangers that we've talked about in some of the past programs with some of the newer translations that change words. And they change words to have different meanings, okay? I don't care if you, you know, if, if you change a word and it has exactly the same meaning in our modern, but if you change a word and it doesn't mean the same thing, you're doing the devil's work. And there are a lot of people out there doing the devil's work with some of the modern translations, okay? In 1 Corinthians 9.20, Paul said, To the Jews I became as a Jew, so that I might win the Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, though not being myself under the law. What does it mean to be under the law? No, let's, let's be clear about this. I don't want to make any mistakes. Galatians 5.18 says, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Okay? You're not under the law. And it's a burden. You're being under well, the law. Well, I wonder how big a burden it is. You can't do it. A couple of weeks ago, you know, Alice and I, for the last few months, we've been just bouncing around. We're getting ready to bounce around over Europe. Uh, bouncing around me being, being led by the Spirit. Amen. <laughs> But we were moving around yeah. from place to place. We were down in Kissimmee, Florida. And right across the street from the little hotel that we were staying at, somebody had set up, they said it was a petting zoo, but they had they had a horse and carriage, and they had an elephant. They had this small elephant, and they were giving rides on the elephant. Okay? Now, you ever see pictures of people, you know, a lot of countries, people ride elephants. Yes. And I thought to myself, that's nice, that's, that's interesting. That's, you're riding on the elephant. The one thing you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to be under the elephant. No, you would not. Yeah. Okay? Because it would squish you flat. Yes. You wouldn't be under. It's all right to be on top of the elephant. It's right to be over the elephant. Mm -hmm. But you most assuredly don't want to be under the elephant. Being under the elephant. Now, people are taking, people are going there, taking their kids and they're, and they're paying money to ride on the elephant. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. That's, that's something. They're taking their kids here to, quote-unquote, bless them, give them a ride. If they were under the elephant, that would be a curse. Yes. Being under the elephant's a curse. Being on the elephant is a blessing. And I want to tell you, the same thing is true with the Word of God. With the law. If you are under the law, that is a curse. That's the curse of the law. But if you are on the law, that's a blessing. Okay? Now... I'm going to read from Psalm 8. Now, this, this psalm has particular meaning to me. And I'm just going to read verses 4 to 6. Psalm 8, 4 to 6. David says, What is man that you take thought of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you crown him with glory and majesty. You make him to rule over the work of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet. Psalms 8, 4 to 6. See, there's a good order. God is a God of good order. Satan is a, a thing of confusion, but God has got a good order. If you think that the law is a curse to you, if you think the law is bad, and you think you are free from the law, you're not. The law is still there to bless you. What you are free from is being under the law and from the curse of the law. But it's all the Word of God, and I promise you, all the Word of God will build faith in your life, and that faith will lead you to an obedience to Christ it will lead to all of the blessings of God. Read Deuteronomy 28.